When our eyes see something, what we usually get is sort of what shows up on your computer screen, a flat image that, uh, you know, it doesn't actually have depth when, when you take it into your eyeball. It's just, you know, we, we get whatever is on the bottom, but there's really no, no inward, outward movement, you know, it, it's just a flat image. So the question is, how does this flat image turn into our three-dimensional idea of what our world is so that we can get around? Uh, so that we can navigate and have an idea of where things are. And one of the more important things is the fact that we have two eyes. So we actually get two images like this, and you know our eyes are right next to each other, so the images are pretty similar. But if there's something different from one thing to the other, let's say there's a tree on this side, then our other eye sees the same tree in the same place. Oh, I meant green. Okay, and then there's something close that, uh, let's see, this eye, gotta make sure I draw it right, this eye would see the ball over here, and then this eye would see it over here, and then what that tells us about the scene is the tree doesn't really move, so we know that it's far away, I'm gonna draw like a top-down view off to the side, uh, this is the top-down view. So we have, you know, the grass, it takes up the bottom half of the frame, so, you know, we know that the grass is covering pretty much our whole field of view here, and then the tree is somewhere in the back. Again, I grabbed the wrong color. Tree is somewhere in the back, and then the red ball is somewhere right in front of us. Um, well, also, that that's another thing, is we know we know that the tree is big and far away, and we know that the ball is small and right in front of us if if you know this is us standing looking at the scene and we would only be able to see maybe that much of it but you know because of the way it moves from one image to the other if you hold your thumb uh, you know a few inches in front of your face and blink your eyes back and forth or or wink back and forth you can see your thumb hopping from here to here and that tells you that it's small and close up, you know, th this red ball isn't actually bigger than the tree. So that's that's one important way. And let's see, if you had, I'll draw a new picture. And this one just relies on one eye. If you see a big telephone pole here, and then you see a smaller one here, and smaller and smaller escaping into the distance, and you know there's there's a road that converges far away all of these little cues that you can even see with one eye they even show up in a photograph these cues tell you what's going on also and then another one that's harder to illustrate i have to start up a new program here blender i have set up some cylinders and a and a cube i'm going to switch to a mouse. There we go. And well, I'll give it perspective. Uh, this is, it, it works with one eye, like, you know, the, the TV screen works with only one eye. And as we move along, we see different things popping out from behind the cube. Like right now, it's, you know, the, the fourth cylinder over there is being hidden, and then as we move along, different ones are hidden by the cube and that's called motion parallax and that gives a really strong sense that there's a three-dimensional thing going on because it's hard to it's hard to trick you into believing it, I don't know how to explain this it it's hard to um, create that effect fakely um, you know this I, I can trick you into almost thinking that that might be um, a little scene out the window, I guess, if I just paint it really realistically, and I, I actually put in a horizon line and stuff, you know, y your eye falls for that really easily, but this is hard to replicate. Um, you know, it, when I move the screen around, you don't actually believe that you're moving, I guess. And I, I can also use this for something else here. Um, let me zoom in. 
I can draw on the screen hopefully in this program too just to give another example of the ocular disparency dis I don't know what the word is but I'll just trace out the scene a little bit very roughly okay and then when I move the camera oh I forgot I'm drawing in 3D uh, maybe I can do this right this time. Uh, if I draw in 2D, this is just like I'm smudging on the screen rather than being part of the three-dimensional scene. There, there's that one. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wanted. And so that gives you a little bit of illustration of what, you know, the outline is what your one eye is seeing and, and what the the 3D image is what your other eye is seeing. Maybe that's helpful, maybe that confuses you more, but I keep hitting the wrong thing. But hopefully that explains um, a little bit about how your eyes actually figure these things out. And oh, there's there's one more I want to mention. I actually don't know how I'm doing on time now. But if I'll just get white, and really quickly, this is an entirely new scene from those. You have your eyes, and you're looking at some object over here, then your eyes can tell how much they're looking at each other. If this is something right in front of your face, and your eyes are almost kind of crossed to look at it, the, the muscles around your eye can feel how tense they are, and they can feel the position of your eye, and know that this one is kind of looking that way instead of straight ahead and know that this one is looking that way instead of straight ahead. And then it, you know, just intuitively, without thinking about it, you can do the math and tell that this is, you know, pretty close to you. But if both your eyes, on the other hand, are facing straight ahead, if your pupils are right here, and anything over like 20 feet, your, your, your eyes pretty much go straight ahead, then your muscles send that information to your brain and then you can tell that it's more than 20 feet away. Just if none of these other if none of these other tricks work, that's one more thing that you can fall back on. And I don't know. I, let, let me check my time. Okay. Uh one more thing is these 3D gl uh glasses and 3D technology. I I guess this is pretty old now. We have better ones now, but we have the red and the blue, and those work by the blue one filters out um, filters out all the blue data, like, you, you know, you have an image up here that has some things that are blue, and then another one that's red, and they kind of align, but not quite, okay? So then, I'll try to draw this a little bit, the, the red photons, or the red light, comes in here and, and just stops, but then the red photons come through here and then they produce an image, you know, whatever it was up on the screen. And then the blue photons come through this one and they can pass through, they get stopped right here, so they come through. And then you get the blue image. And then your eyes get the very slightly different images that make it look 3D when you look at it. A, uh, you know, it, it's the same thing as when you're looking at a scene and, and things jump back and forth when you blink your eyes. It's just they're seeing a little bit of a difference and, and that tells it that the ball is closer to you or or that, uh, you know, whatever 3D movie you're watching makes the characters look like they're popping out of the screen. And, I don't know, I, I'm not sure how clear I'm being about this, but if the lines or if the the images, let's say there's a person, if the images are pretty far apart like that, and that's probably exaggerating, but then that'll make it look like it's really popping out, or if you put your glasses on backwards, like it's really deep into the screen. But if the images are more uh, overlaying each other, if they're more like this, then it will look not as much. This is greater than that in whatever direction you're going. So 
hopefully I gave you a pretty good sense of how your eyes can interpret the world and, and make, uh, make these inferences about how everything is arranged. And if you have any questions, I guess leave it in the comments and, and I can make a new video on any part of this that wasn't clear.